Erev Tov Kavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And friends, we have some very serious breaking news this evening. Uh, President Erdogan of Turkey has actually uh, says that his forces are in Syria to end Assad's rule. This is something we brought out to you here on Israeli News Live from the very beginning when this, uh, the coup that failed inside of Turkey I said all along that I believe that that coup was a staged coup in order to be able to get his tanks and his soldiers inside of Syria in order to topple President Bashar al-Assad. And now the truth comes out in this article by RT News here. Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said that the Turkish army entered Syria to end the rule of President Bashar Assad, whom he accused of terrorism and causing the deaths of thousands. We entered Syria to end the rule of the tyrant al-Assad, who terrorizes with state terror. We didn't enter for any other reason, the Turkish president said at the first inter-parliamentary Jerusalem platform uh, sym symposium in Istanbul, as quoted by Hariat Daily. Now that, that's pretty much, as far as I can see, that's about the most hypocritical statement I have ever heard of any president that I've ever seen in, in existence today. I mean, that's about as bad as Fidel Castro, if you ask me. A man that is in prison, tens of thousands of his own people, tortures them in prison and everything else, kills and annihilates and practically tries to genocide the Kurds. He genocided the Armenians in the war back years ago. And of course, of course he wasn't in leadership at that time, but today he is in the, involved in the genocide of the Kurdish people uh, as well. Now my question is, is will Russia intervene for Bashar al-Assad now that uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has made it clear his ambition is to topple Bashar al-Assad. He said, I am there to help the Free Syrian Army. Well, in that case, he's helping them, ISIS, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, and every other thug terrorist group that there is in the nation. And yet the people that are being freed from East Aleppo are saying that they were terrorized by these groups that are inside Eastern Aleppo. So the question is, is what will President Putin do now, now that he sees that Erdogan is not there for his friend Bashar al-Assad? And now turning our focus as well with Israel, we know that Israel, you know, sirens have gone off over in the Golan once again. Now it's been kind of a tit for tat here in the last couple of days. According to the Israeli uh, government, ISIS targeted some of its own men inside of the Golan, so Israel responded with airstrikes on ISIS positions. And now they have also sent mortar shells or rockets back inside of Israel early this morning before daylight. Uh, we're finding this out on siren sound in the Golan Heights amid tensions after Israel-ISIS clashes there. I am really getting concerned, friends, of what's going on. And the thing is, is, is this a staged front? I kind of wonder, do our own brothers in Israel, do they know? Is this something that they're doing to drag Israel into the battle? Is this something that NATO has planned to get Israel across the border there in order to topple Bashar al-Assad? If that be the case, we may very well see the biblical fulfillment of Isaiah 17, Damascus becoming a ruinous heap. But keep in mind, my Israeli brothers and sisters, I don't think this is what God wants you to do. I really don't. I really, when I look at this whole scenario right here that's going on over in Syria, although I do know clearly it is prophetically prophesied these things would happen, but I just don't feel like this is what we need to be involved in. So we'll have to see. Uh, it, 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 with, 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 the, with the announcement of Erdogan here, with the clashes with, with Israel, and I do believe that Israel has every right to defend itself against ISIS over its border, but it seems very suspect to me that the clashes are happening at the same time that Erdogan says that he's there to topple Bashar al-Assad, uh, and not only he does that at, at the very, at the, uh, the first inter-parliamentary Jerusalem platform is when he takes advantage of saying this. You got to remember, and this is something very good for my Jewish brothers and sisters to know as well, there is a plan, there is a plot to take Jerusalem and make it an international city. And the only way they can do it, if you look at the, the prophecy in Micah, Israel is promised to return to her homeland and be there forevermore, chapter 4. But suddenly, 
The prophet Micah says, Why are you in travail? Is there no king in thee? Has thy counselor perished? In Isaiah chapter 4, it states these things here. Then it speaks about how that Israel will go out of the city and they shall dwell in the fields. I've always stated, like I said about Erdogan and this coup being a staged coup, I said the same thing when it comes to what's happening in Israel right now. I made the same statements that what would happen in Israel, there would be an invasion inside of the country to force the Jewish people out of Jerusalem so that they can fulfill the Vatican's biblical prophetic insights that they desire. Remember, Joel Bainerman, the late Joel Bainerman, clearly said, he says, what the Vatican's theology may not matter to most Jews, but it should matter because they want to fulfill end-time scenarios based on their theology. And that's why all the wars are being fought in the Middle East right now. Not to say that we don't have genuine biblical prophecies that will be fulfilled, but perhaps those prophets like Micah knew that the Vatican would be involved in that. Well, clearly he did, and so did Obadiah. Obadiah knew that they would come and drink upon God's holy mountain there, and they did exactly that. He knew it would be men only, Obadiah, uh, verse 16 on chapter 1 there, and they did exactly that, men only, masculine plural in the Hebrew. And all the nations would continue to drink, that meaning all those different uh, denomination like the Greek Orthodox, etc., would continue to drink upon the holy mountain there. That's expected to happen as well. But then judgment will turn and come against the Mount of Esau. But then again, the Vatican would like to see that happen too because they want to move their headquarters over to Jerusalem. And so the stage is being set. The coup in Turkey was staged in order for, the, for uh, Erdogan to get the backing and trust of Putin to get his troops and forces over into the country. And who knows? Maybe Bashar al-Assad has been sold out by Putin as well. I certainly hope not, and I'm sure we'll find that out soon enough. I hope that President Bashar al-Assad and President Putin really do have a good relation. But what's going to happen next? It's a setup. And I think it's a setup for the Jewish people, the genuine Jewish people that came to Israel to see the return of the Messiah or the first coming of the Messiah for them in their own thinking. To me, it's the second, it's the second advent of the Messiah. Now, not the, not the alien version that Pope Francis plans on uh, ushering in for Israel and bringing some kind of demonic being on this earth and call that his Jesus. No, I don't believe in that for one moment. But I guarantee you one thing, they're going to do something to force the Jews out of Jerusalem. And all they need is a good war to spill over into Israel to cause this, to really make a good Gog and Magog battle. And I think that's about to take place at just about any time. And with this type of scenario unraveling now with President Erdogan and the comments that he's making, it could very well, very well easily take place without a doubt. Oh my gosh. Anyway, Prime Minister uh, uh, Netanyahu's defense minister speaks of ISIS on Syria-Israel border following the attempt of the attack of the IDF soldiers on the Golan Heights. And of course, he state, makes in the statement here that he would do whatever it takes to defend Israel uh, against uh, ISIS and that front opening up there. But again, as I state, I do believe that this may be a staged event as well something they're doing to try to drag Israel into the battle. And it could be totally unawares to Prime Minister Netanyahu. I pray, and I pray to God that he is not aware of it and that it's only a staged thing. But I guarantee you one thing, I'm sure Barack Hussein Obama does know about it because that's only the plan because he's a good boy for the Vatican, a good Roman soldier to fight their wars for him. Mm. Anyway, um, very sick, guys. I apologize. I got a bad headache from a serious sinus infection, so uh, falling a little bit behind here. Uh, we will be back and running again tomorrow, uh, so do pray for me and try to get more information out to you as these things unravel. Again, we know also too quickly to mention to you the fires, as I said earlier, burning up in Tennessee, still burning in Israel as well. The fires are burning like nuts over there. Um, and we are, we are seeing all kinds of serious issues. I have another thing I want to share with you as well that got sent to me. Britain, back on, I think, the 17th of... Um, uh, let me just pull this up for you. I'm going to have to kind of do this very crudely because the headache on me right now has been so bad from this sinus thing here that I've got. 
but I want to share something with you here. Um, this is independent.co.uk. All right, now I'm going to sh share this with you guys here so you can see this here. All right, just so you can see that there, I wanted you to be able to see, let me get you a little bit closer there. All right, now I won't be able to put the link in because I just can't do it right now, but I will try, I'll be coming back to this story. The Snooper Charter passed into law this week. Say goodbye to your privacy. It was a very subtle bill that slipped through uh, the parliament in the UK. Uh, and it says the fact that you're, that you're on this website is potentially state knowledge. Service providers must now store details of everything you do online for 12 months and make it accessible to dozens of public authorities. This week, a law was passed. Now, when they say this week, I think this was November 17th, no, 19th, November 19th, so it's about a week old. Uh, I just, I was unaware of it. It says this week, a law was passed that silently rips privacy from uh, from modern from the modern world it is called the investigator investigatory investigator excuse me investigatory powers act if you want to look it up investigatory powers act under the guise of counterterrorism the british state has achieved totalitarianism to, to, excuse me totalitarian style surveillance powers the most intrusive system of any democracy in history it now has the ability to indiscriminately hack, intercept, record, monitor the communications of internet use of the entire population. The hundreds of chilling mass surveillance programs revealed by Edward Snowden in 2013 were, we assumed, uh, the result of the failure of democratic process. Snowden's bravery finally gave parliament and public the opportunity to scrutinize this intrusive scale spying and bring back state back into check. But unfortunately, it's not doing much good in Britain. I'm sure that's going to go across the span around the world. Uh, so, so much for privacy. Welcome to the New World Order. I'm just waiting for the Pope of Rome to give you his uh, demon Antichrist uh, to say that this is the Savior bringing in peace. Peace and safety when there is no peace. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Talk.